everyone and welcome. I'm Diane and my passion is painting and creating in my studio. Every day I share a video with you on YouTube in which I paint and create all sorts of nature inspired pictures. I also share loads of tips on how to make the most of your painting journey, interrupted fairly frequently by our family of dogs, cats, chickens and sheep. So welcome on board, click subscribe and turn on notifications and let's learn to paint watercolour. Hi everyone, welcome to my studio. Today we are going to paint some tropical fish underwater in a kind of coral um, environment and I've been doing some um, little practice sketches this morning with some um, ideas about colours and uh, I've settled on these ones here that I've selected out as my limited palette for these colourful fish. Quinacridone gold, potter's pink, permanent rose, cobalt blue, um, Caribbean blue, uh, Windsor Violet and um, Turquoise, Cobble Turquoise. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw, this is my Etcher sketchbook. It just occurred to me the other day, I don't know if you remember the Etcher sketch. Do you think they're playing on words, the Etcher sketch? Remember that old machine that children, I had one as a kid where you turned the knobs and the lines drew with a magnet inside this kind of box. And it was called an Etcher sketch. And I was talking to Etcher about the sketchbook that they sent me and suddenly thought, Etcher sketch? Okay, Etcher sketchbook, oh well, whatever. Um, and uh, also, so I'm using that and the paper worked quite nicely yesterday. This is what uh, I did yesterday. And uh, that turned out okay. So, and I was quite pleased about this here. If you see this here, where the paint, um, melded the two different colours, that was Caribbean blue and um, cobalt turquoise, and I didn't actually get a back run, I didn't get a cauliflower, it's just a really nice spreading there, and, uh, and yet I just chucked it in fairly randomly. So that's the difference between a good quality paper and uh, a poor quality paper where you'll get all sorts of back runs. So it's worth, um, you know, kind of considering that. I do believe this is Baoheng, the Chinese paper, I believe that uh, Etcher's paper is called Baoheng and uh, in these particular books. So you can find that online and uh, I'll put a link in the description below if I can find one. And uh, the other thing is, um, I realized yesterday too that it's the 20th anniversary of the death of Anne Morrow Lindbergh, the author of Gift from the Sea. So I thought I would dedicate this sketchbook to her and to that little book, which I think has meant a lot to a lot of women over the years. And I'm going to put little quotes in here um, opposite each painting as I do it. And uh, yesterday's is about solitude and uh, today is also about quiet time. And she's talking about how everybody, especially women, because they're so hectic usually, needs to try to carve out some time in order to nurture their soul and perhaps even um, humanity. So that's a thought. So I'm using my um, uh, draw well round nylon brushes, which you can get from Japan. If you're prepared to go to a little bit of trouble, you can contact them and they will send them to you. Um, several people have already done that. I don't get any commission on that. I'm just passing on that information. So. The, uh, that will be also in the description below the video. Um, okay, so we've done the paints, we've done the brushes, we've talked about why I'm painting this, and uh, here's my pencil, and I'm going to draw something now. I don't actually have much of an idea. I've done a little sketch. I think I said I've just tried out, but I tried out mostly the colors here. This was, I did this with a um, watercolor pencil, and then I was trying out some bleeds with some paints, but I don't have a structure in mind, but I'm going to, similar to yesterday, where I put the line of the sea over here, I'm going to put the line of the coral down here. And um, I think, okay, this is where it all gets very, uh, it slows down a bit, doesn't it? So I need to, I think um, I'm going to put one of those corals that looks like lots of fingers. 
just because I rather like drawing those. They're quite fun. Just let them go all sort of random like that. Perhaps we'll put another one behind that's a little bit different. Horribly difficult to paint. That would be the kind of thing that might be quite good to, um, to use watercolour pencils for, actually. And then we'll put some fronds of undersea grass up behind this. Like that. I don't know what your weather's like where you are, but here we're having a heat wave now. Typical, isn't it? And so I'm actually in the studio painting quite early in the morning for me. It's, it's only just gone 10 o'clock. That's, that's early for me. Try to get this done before it gets too, too hot. And then I'm going to put a lump of coral here and I'm going to use Potter's Pink for that just because Potter's Pink is such a good granulating color. It's rather fun to use. Um, okay, so that's going to go down there like that behind. And I think we could have that growing out of there. Okay, so this is going to be a sort of sandy bank down the side there with a lump or two of coral. In front and a bit of sand behind and then the fish are going to go over here and this is where you can really let your imagination um, go wild. I'm just going to push this back a little bit because I'm having a big problem with my um, the arm that holds the camera gradually moving it seems to have a life of its own. Uh, okay so over here we are going to put some fish and uh, they're going to be more or less imaginary fish. We'll start with a simple one. A typical fish like that, give him an eye. And we can put all sorts of colors in there, can't we? And um, let's have another one going the other way, perhaps. Someone said yesterday that they they liked the painting that uh, that I did yesterday with the, with the beach scene, even though they weren't a beach person. Well, I would endorse that. I'm not a beach person either. I'm certainly not a swimming person. I can just about keep my head above water. Here comes an angel fish. Um, and I, I have fair skin, so I can't tolerate uh, the sun and I don't like the heat so I'm not a beach person either at all but do appreciate its beauty um, maybe we can put a starfish here concentrate on drawing a five-pointed star and I think I've been thinking about jellyfish a lot lately not something I normally think about I have to admit but I'm going to do a, a big jellyfish soon and I hope it doesn't upset anybody's sensibilities by being a jellyfish because it's kind of a bit you know it's kind of thing that somebody might not like I suppose I'm not sure I do but they are beautiful really um, so I'm going to put one, I'm going to put one here. Amongst the fish. They have a kind of skirt, don't they, in the middle? And then they have lots of tendrils, which I won't draw in because I'll do those with a pen. This one that I'm using the picture of, which I got from Pinterest, is more or less translucent and just has a little bit of colour, but you can make them anything you like. I think that's the wonderful thing about painting, 
you can make it up. I mean, really, you should, shouldn't you? you? What is reality, after all, you know? If reality is what you make it, then why not make it lots of beautiful colours? Why do we need to absolutely copy um, anything that we can see? Because what we can't see is probably more beautiful than what we can see. Oh no, I don't like that. And I don't like that because they look like they're all queuing up in the cafeteria to have their lunch. So no, we don't want that. We don't want that. So we'll have one coming towards us or something like that. Maybe, uh, Yeah, and they can overlap a little bit. We'll probably want to put some bubbles in. And I was wondering about how to do that best. I'm not sure, but um, we'll see. Okay, so let us begin. Um, I think it's best probably to do the background first. So I'm going to start with um, the sand behind here and the the coral will go on top, so I'll just do I'll wet the background there and pick up some Potter's Pink with a tiny dab of um, permanent rose. And we'll just put that in and let that do its thing. doesn't have to be exact. And then I'm going to put a little bit of um, quinacridone gold with the potter's pink to do these coral bits. And just vary the color as you go along. Don't bother too much about keeping it um, tidy and within the lines. And this, whoops, this bit, I'm going to put, make it a bit bluish. Okay. And now I'm going to wet this side. I got too much paint on my brush there for a second, but it's okay now. And I'm going to paint roughly around the fish because I don't mind if they bleed when I come to paint them. I don't mind if they bleed a bit into the background. And the same as the video of yesterday, Look at it from sideways on a little bit to make sure that you're covering most of the area that you want to make into the sea.
This is a great relaxation painting and also really good practice for learning how the colors blend, what you can create, you know, because if you've got a good set of probably about 20 of the right colors, you can nowadays, because um, pigments are so clean and pure if you buy good quality paints, um, nowadays you can um, make your own mixtures of, and so you can come up with even, you can even mix quinacridone gold from burnt sienna and let's say cadmium yellow or one of the bright yellows, one of the synthetic yellows. Nothing really has cadmium in it anymore, of course. Um, so yes, you don't need to have uh, 364. You can have them if you want them, but it doesn't half make it difficult to decide what you're going to use and how you're going to paint if you've got too many colors to choose from, which is one of the reasons I tend to paint with a restricted palette. Had that having been said, I am planning to buy, with the help of some money that a very kind viewer, viewer, yes, viewer, makes me feel like I'm on telly, um, has given me a, an Amazon gift card to spend on materials because, as she said, it does add up, you know, and we do this for free. Uh, so I'm going to use some of that money to buy a set of Daniel Smith unusual colours, colours that I haven't ever used before, so um, I'm going to do that. Right, so that's all wet, and now I'm going to come in with loose... Uh, loose washes of um, turquoise and cadmium, not cadmium, Caribbean blue. Caribbean blue is a kind of phthalo blue, so if you haven't got Caribbean, if you haven't got access to Old Holland, who are the ones that make it, you could probably get away with phthalo blue. It's very similar, it's probably got the same pigment in it. And I'm just using those two colours more or less at random in areas. I'm not blending them together. I'm trying to encourage it to go up to the fish. I might put a little bit of mauve down here where the um, s jellyfish is going to be. Let's just put a lot of water there for the center of the jellyfish and see how that works. Experimentation is a good thing, eh? The paints will dry lighter and um, they continue to dry for, I think, a couple of days at least. I mean, maybe if you live in a very hot, dry climate, they dry quicker, but you don't get the right, the real finished color until a couple of days after you've painted it, whatever it is. I'm going to add a little bit of um, quinacridone gold to the turquoise over here to make it a little bit greener. A little bit lighter.
The paper's buckling a bit because it's not stretched, which is not my favorite thing to have happen. I'd prefer to stretch my paper, but I'm not quite sure how you can stretch the paper inside a sketchbook, so. So I'm having to put up with that. I will try and think of a way. I'll just dab that out a little bit there. Okay, well, we'll see how that dries. We might get some backgrounds on that. There's quite a bit of water there, but we'll see. Um, so yeah, I've got quite a lot running up there too. So this, this paper is interesting. It's not really absorbing the water very quickly. So we'll see how that goes. Okay, I shall let that dry and come back to that shortly. <coughs> okay, so this is dry now and uh, I'm going to start painting the um, seaweed. So I'm going to mix up a fairly dark green here. That's um, some Windsor Violet, some turquoise and some Conacridone gold. And uh, I'm just going to drop in the leaves at the back. Like that. And then I'll change my color slightly by adding a little bit more Quinacridone gold, for example, and then come down again with that in the background there. Alter the amount you press down to give different shapes, <coughs> excuse me, in the leaves. And then I'm going to, um, I'll do a dark one here. If you, if you pick up two colors on your brush, you'll get an interesting blend and then when it's um, if you want to make it wider or something like that you just go over the top of it like that and the shadows and everything you can just play around and then I'm going to do the the piece of coral there I'm going to do that in so that it stands out against the greens I'm going to paint it in Acridone gold and I'm going to use the paint quite thick, thickly. I might have to fill in the water around the back afterwards, it just depends how this goes. So I would just put that in nice and strong like that and then another piece here. Okay, so we'll let that dry. I might just put um, a little bit more seaweed in the distance in lighter blue to show that it's in the distance, it's in a lighter shade. And perhaps we could drop in a few dots. And it looks as if some of the iridescent medium has landed on here somehow from somewhere so that's nice it's kind of given it a little bit of a sparkle just a little bit more potter's pink there in the foreground like that to indicate the rocks the coral or whatever that is <coughs> okay so now i'm going to do the sheep the sheep the sheep the fish not sheep um, so I'm going to wet the um, out the uh, inside the outline, and then I'll just drop the colour in there, a couple of colours, and I'm going to go for something fairly bright, 
So what shall I use? Um, well, quinacridone is a good start, isn't it? So let's put that in the tail and the fins. And then maybe um, pink, why not? And we'll see what happens if I put pink in the body. And see how much that spreads. And um, shall we do this one in cobalt blue? And I'm going to put um, violet on top of that one. We have to let it do its thing. Um, okay, this one. Turquoise. And quinacridone. This I don't like. I don't like that. So I'm going to lift that out. And the reason I don't like that is because it's too different. I want the whole thing to be harmonious. So the pink is too different. So we take that out and we come in again with something a little bit more muted. So I'm putting in a soft gray and then I will drop um, something into that. What shall I put in there? Blue. Let me see what happens to that. This jellyfish, we're going to do a scalloped edge like that. And then I'm going to let the paint just blend up to the top by dropping in some water, see what happens there. These little fish I'm going to do bright yellow and when these are dry I'm going to decorate them a bit more. I haven't yet decided how. Starfish, we better do that in brown, browny gold. A 
while all of that is drying, I'll get my, I think, I wonder if the gold pen, yes. Okay, I'm going to do the, this is a um, hybrid gel pen, which makes very nice gold lines. So we'll just do the tendrils from jellyfish like that. I think that'll do there. Maybe we'll put a few embellishments in gold on the leaves over here. And perhaps some bubbles. And to increase the texture on the rocks, we'll do a little bit of spraying with the toothbrush. So these are, I'm not sure if they're coral or whether they're actual rocks. So we'll just pick up some quinacridone and some purple. Spray that on there. And then down here, some blue and purple, perhaps. them some texture by just pressing with some paper towel. And I'll just let that dry for a minute and we'll come back and do the finishing touches. Okay, so this is dry now. So I'm just going to put some slightly decorative um, things on some of these here. So we could put some horizontal lines on this dark one like that. And uh, he needs a, a little, or well, they all need eyes. So I'm just gonna grab a really small um, brush and I think I'll use violet. This brush is literally losing its mind. Um, come in and put some some circles in for the eyes <clears throat> and they probably also need mouths I would think so something Maybe a couple of dark touches on this. I'm not going to mess with that, it looks okay. Yes. 
And let me see what else. Maybe we'll put some spots on this one. And like yesterday, I did some uh, pencil lines to delineate a little bit rather than using ink because we're underwater here. So I didn't feel that that was uh, terribly appropriate, but I quite like the way the gold ink has worked. So I'm going to outline some of these or give them some dots. And then maybe we'll outline the starfish. And I think the last thing I'm going to do is probably just outline some of these uh, seaweed fronds a little bit just to give them a little bit more definition but you could probably carry on with this for a long time and play with it um, for ages and then when you're done with that you can do another one This just kind of sharpens up some of the edges because it was so difficult to um, paint round them exactly. So, And also you might want to um, go over some of the pencil lines that you can't get rid of if you feel that they're a bit too much. <laughs> like that, it works quite well. Just put a, a pen line on top of where the pencil was if you prefer the pen to pencil. And you could also continue on with the gold pen and you could do some uh, embellishments like that so if you wanted to. All depends how you feel really. And there's room over here to add a few more fish if you want them. Um, or you can just leave it like that, you could put some spatter on if you wanted. You could put some gold on these rocks. You could put some um, iridescent paint on. Um, let's see, where is it? You could, maybe we should. Perhaps a little bit on the jellyfish like that. This little fish up here is a little bit sad. I don't think, I don't think he's very happy. So we'll give him some sparkles. So there we are. I think I'm going to call that more or less done. I'll just take off the the um, the tape, remembering to pull it off sideways so that it doesn't hopefully rip. And there we are. So there's the final painting. I hope you're going to have a go at that and that you'll enjoy it, even if you're not a seaside or a beachy type of person. It's quite fun. It's a pleasant way to spend an afternoon and uh, you can always give it away, can't you, to somebody who is. Um, please give me a like and subscribe and turn on notifications if you wouldn't mind so that we can always be sure of meeting up again tomorrow for the next painting.
and uh, so I'll let you go now and enjoy the rest of your Sunday. It's a beautiful day here, it's far too hot to be inside, but then it's far too hot to be outside too, so what can you do? So I say bye-bye for now, everybody, and I'll see you again soon. Happy Sunday. Bye-bye for now. Bye-bye. <laughs>